Hello, I'm Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, the chairwoman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. And today I have joining me Dr. Deputy Fire Chief Miles Allen. Welcome to my first segment of Chat with the Chair. I'm so happy to have you here today and certainly wanted to start off, where's your, what's hometown for you? What's your hometown? I know Douglas uh, uh, County is where you live now in Douglasville, but tell me a little bit about where you're from and uh, just give me a little background information. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, my name is Miles Allen. I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been here in Douglas County for 22 and a half years now, and so I'm loving every minute of it. Oh, wow, 22 and a half years. I've been here 21, so I'm right on your heels. Tell me, uh, so you've lived in Douglas County for 22 years, and um, now we have something big that's happened recently here in Douglas County, and we're so excited about this SAFER grant that hit. We are like almost one in a million of the counties that received it, uh, this particular grant throughout the nation. So we were real excited about this grant. And if you could just share with the citizens of Douglas County uh, what this grant would do for us. Yes, ma'am. So the SAFER grant is a grant that is built to help uh, staff emergency responders for the fire department. Uh, and this particular grant, we're receiving uh, close to $10 million. Wow. And that will help staff 46 firefighters for their pay. 46 firefighters, that's a huge. In fact, speaking of 46 firefighters, we have Station 9 that's coming aboard very soon, and that's our newest fire station, the Super Fire Station. Talk about that and what this 46 firemen would do and what, what the impact uh, those firemen will have on this new station. Yes, ma'am. So the 46 firefighters that are going to be coming here for, with the uh, SAFER grant, in response to the SAFER grant, will help house uh, the personnel for the station number nine, which is going to be going up in the Thornton Road, uh, Douglas, Douglas Hill Road area. And so this station is going to be one of the uh, bigger stations that we have. Okay. It's going to house a fire engine, a possibly a ladder truck, a tanker truck, um, uh, and, a, and, a, and a, uh, an ambulance. Oh, wow. Superstation. So uh, can you talk about the square footage of the new fire station? Do you have any, any idea what the square footage looks I like? I don't have the, the exact square footage, but um, this station is, is, is a four-bay fire station. Oh, wow. And so considering the size of our vehicles and everything, it's going to be one of the largest stations that we do have. Uh, currently, we have uh, 10 stations, and this will make our, our 12th. Uh, and uh, it's it's on the cusp of being one of those innovative uh, new stations with all the bells and whistles. Wow, yeah, it's gonna be uh, 21st century. Yes, ma'am. Bells and whistles, I know. The, uh, so how many employees are we looking, how many uh, firefighters are we planning to uh, house? In so hopefully we're looking at s somewhere around uh, maybe 13 to 15, a little bit more than that possibly, uh, depending on the rooms and how we're gonna staff the vehicles uh, will also determine how many people we're going to have in there, but we're looking upwards around 13 to 15. I know this is a uh, huge uh, effort or uh, and a huge win for our industrial and commercial uh, partners yes, here in Douglas County. Uh, can you speak to uh, their excitement regarding this new uh, fire station? So without putting the names of the different companies that are out there, right. uh, we have a lot of industrial areas uh, uh, that will that station will be able to respond uh, for those industrial emergencies that we have. We have uh, big businesses out there uh, and it will help our response time. So whereas we have stations coming afar to respond out there, this station, when, once it's built, it's going to be right there to serve the citizens and serve those companies and industries that are sitting out there. And tell me exactly where it's located, if you could give it So it's going to be on the north side of Thornton Road and Douglas Hill Road. Wow. That's great. So I know our uh, industrial and commercial partners are just real excited. Yes, ma'am. So uh, will you have some of the new, uh, and you just mentioned that earlier, our new firefighters will be stationed there. There are some great things other than uh, our new fire station. Station number four. Yes, ma'am. One that I had an opportunity to work with you and the, their, uh, the deputy chiefs, or should I say the, the administration of the fire department on. Fire Station 4, uh, certainly located in Fair Play, was a concern of 
mine, and I've had an opportunity to bring it back to the administration, which is, uh, includes the Board of Commissioners, yes, to uh, demonstrate by photographs uh, that this building, Fire Station Number 4 and Fair, Fair Play needed renovating. Uh, and it had some, uh, it was crying for help. And, yes. uh, and when I had an opportunity to tour the building, I mean, I, um, it was, as my grandmother would say, it was more than meets the eye. I was like, wow, there's opportunity for some reconstruction, yes. some redevelopment, and then also to make it more efficient. Can you speak to what that uh, fire station for once the renovation is complete, what it would do for the community? Yes, ma'am. So Fair Play, uh, fire station number four is uh, near and dear to my heart because that's where I live. And so uh, right now it has, it's in need of some tender loving care. Okay. And uh, we're going to add some attention to it, make some uh, renovations, bring it up to uh, not just the codes, but the standards and the, uh, the beautification of the area. Oh, absolutely. So you say you have two schools that are in? Yes, ma'am. We have uh, Fair Play Middle School and South Douglas Elementary. And uh, like I've been out there all my time here in Douglas, and so I've drive past that station every single day. And now to have the privilege to be a part of renovating it and upgrading it is a, is a, is a dear pleasure of mine. Wow, yes, absolutely. And also, uh, Doctor. Yes, ma'am. You've been recently uh, had the title of, uh, and uh, the honor and received doctor, doctor, you have your doctorate, and congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate you. December yes, of this past year. Uh, of 2022 is when it was restored. Congratulations. I appreciate I'm so proud you. Of you. We have some great things happening here in Douglas County with our fire and EMS and uh, certainly the Board of Commissioners. We have uh, uh, our strategic plan focuses on public health and we listen to the vo we have listened to the voices of our citizens and uh, certainly the cry is we want to make sure that we uh, invest and uh, provide resources for our public safety uh, division here in Douglas County. Certainly if you could speak to uh, the tanker uh, that we have, the tankers and the, the QRVs that are coming to Douglas County. Yes, ma'am. So uh, one of the things about living out in Fair Play is that that's one of the more rural areas. Uh, and Douglas being as wide as it is, as large it is, as it is, we have a lot of rural areas in which our water supply hydrants are not as plentiful as we as we would like them to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, conventional wisdom is that we need to have a tanker vehicle that can provide that water coverage uh, to uh, help us uh, supply engines, uh, fire engines, to uh, put out fires. And uh, to have a tanker truck uh, be able to do that is is a is a blessing for us. It is it, it, an additional resource. Right. And we have a tanker for the being built at, as we speak. It's in for, both tankers are in production, and one for the east side of the county and one for the west side. And yes, ma'am. Cur currently, that's what we're looking at: one for the east and one for the west. There's some uh, there's some things uh, that we're looking at. I have a crew down there that's torn the torn the the uh, warehouse in which it's being built, mm -hmm. uh, and so they're reporting back to me, and uh, we're right we're on the path right now. Wow. Uh, also, the I-20 corridor, there's a need for a tanker. Could you speak to that Yes, as well? so not only uh, does the tanker cover us for the rural areas, uh, anyone that knows anything about I-20, there are no hydrants on I-20. And so there are times where we have emergencies in which we need uh, copious amounts of water. And so that would uh, supplement not just our engines, our fire engines, but uh, also our other trucks that that have water and those tankers would uh, be, a, be a, a great benefit to us there also. Yes, so do you have an idea when the tankers will be fully produced and ready to one roll is, out into Douglas one, County? One is, one is being built right now. Okay. Uh, and that is finished and we got the second one that is in the process of uh, going through its, its uh, creation. Uh, once again, we're looking at some other things, but yes, we got two. Uh, ones should be ready to go sooner than later. All right, I know we're excited about that. If yes, you could speak a little bit about our QRVs, quick response vehicles uh, for our citizens. You know, I, I don't, I try to stay away from acronyms, but if you could just speak uh, uh, regarding the efficiencies of the QRVs and what they would do for our citizens here in Douglas County. Yes, ma'am. So the QRVs is, is just that, a quick response vehicle, and that helps, it's, a, it's an additional resource that helps our ambulances when we get called on medical emergencies. Our QRVs are, are equipped with uh, all the latest 
uh, medical emergency uh, equipment. Uh, we have paramedics that are riding those vehicles. We also have uh, attendants that help the paramedics. So when these QRVs go to an emergency response, um, they could determine whether or not that individual uh, needs a higher level of, of care or if, if that individual needs uh, transport. Right. So higher level of care, you just now you're looking at triaging and acuity level. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, That's on the medical side. All right. I had another question regarding uh, mutual aid along that uh, corridor for the commercial and the industrial area. You will continue to utilize uh, mutual aid. Yes, ma'am. We are. We're. We're. We always do deal with our mutual aid partners. Deal with them. Uh, we're very close to our mutual aid partners. So having that stationed there out in uh, the Riverside area. Uh, we have Cobb County that surrounds us. We have Paulding, we have Carroll. Um, so coming up soon, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have a mutual aid summit in which we get all our yeah. partners together and we discuss our resources. We discuss our capabilities and uh, we talk about how we can help each other in the event that uh, one county needs help from the other. With a lot, we, we have a, a significant amount of construction here throughout the county. Yes, ma'am. So are you and your staff prepared to address fires in the event, you know, we have quite a few apartment complexes, uh, yes, uh, townhouses, uh, homes being built. Can you speak to that? So Douglas County, uh, I spoke earlier that Doug, I've been here 22 years and day one that I got here is totally different from year 22. So yes. Douglas County has grown. So with the number of apartments being built with the number of uh, townhomes and subdivisions and hotels. Our county is growing. So our team, our inspection team is, is very integral to what we do. So they go out, they do uh, their fire prevention, their fire inspection work, mm -hmm. and they advise and they, they recommend. And as an as a organization, we are prepared. We are really prepared for what's going on. There's some work that we need to do, but like everything else, uh, anything that's worth having is worth working for. Absolutely. They, I've heard anything worth having is wor worth waiting for. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, good things <laughs> come to those who wait. Yes, ma'am. Certainly, I uh, had a question uh, regarding uh, the railroad. Yes, ma'am. runs through Douglas County. Uh, uh, Deputy Chief Allen, certainly when you came on board about a year and a about a year and a, how long you been on board? About a year and a half, almost two years. About a, yeah, almost two, that time mm, is flying. Almost two years. Uh, that was the first uh, subject I broached with you. Yes, ma'am. Because of your experience uh, uh, coming from Lockheed, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and you have a significant amount uh, of experience, and we'll talk about that a little later as we uh, cl close out on this chat with the chair. But I, if you could just speak to the railroad, uh, what we've identified, certainly you, al you uh, allowed me to get in your ear yes, regarding uh, hazardous materials that come through Douglas County that keeps me up at night yes, uh, worrying about our citizens here in Douglas County and also Douglasville because it goes straight uh, in the middle of our downtown area, the railroad. Uh, certainly uh, working in healthcare, I've been exposed to quite a few carcinogenic uh, agents such as ethylene oxide and things that are odorless and it concerned me for our citizens and wanted you to make sure you uh, formulate a plan, and you did, yes, around uh, data, uh, getting data to determine what comes through here at all times based on the cars and I believe the serial numbers and all the things that you will speak about in just a second. So you have the floor, tell us about the railroad, and I wanna give our citizens here in Douglas County a sense of comfort that we do have our arms around uh, the, the, the materials that are coming through. Uh, certainly, you know, you, we always are managing the unexpected and we don't know what happens at, what can happen at any time. But I want to assure you, we are managing the unexpected. So you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. So when I first got here, um, that was one of your concerns. Yes. And so right away we addressed it. Uh, we partnered up with Norfolk Southern and I actually went out and I did uh, a day's worth of training with Norfolk Southern. Yes. And with that is gaining all the resources and information. Um, the one thing that's unique about Douglas County is the rail lines run straight through residential. Right. And so with the amount of, um, with the amount of chemicals and other products and, and even Amtrak, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a certain amount of risk that we have to be prepared for. And so with the education and the information that I received, 
uh, I brought it back to the fire department and we, are, we have uh, developed a plan in the okay. event of. So, you know, we gotta be prepared. If we, if we stay prepared, then we're, we're ready. Yeah. If we stay ready, we don't have to get ready. There you go. That's what we say in the healthcare world. All right, Chief, what keeps you up at night? Uh, that's that's one of the things there there's a lot of things that really keep me up at night but um because of the the various nature of the 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 emergencies that we can get through this county um, I, I try to stay I try to stay as aware situationally aware as possible so Douglas County deals with everything from uh, vehicle accidents fires hazmat medical natural disasters uh, we're very, we partner very closely with our EMA partners. So um, not just one single thing keeps me up at night. It's a, it's a plethora of things that I, that I tend to worry about. The, the blessing is that the fire department has a strong 180 plus man and woman department in which uh, these individuals know and train and learn their jobs on a daily basis. So we are truly fit, we are truly equipped, um, and we have the resources, we ask for resources, we get the resources, and we're ready. Speaking of equipped, trained, and ready to go, could you speak to the length of uh, time it takes to train a firefighter, and also uh, if you could just add the EMS portion as well? Yes, ma'am. So when a firefighter comes to Douglas County, um, it's, their training lasts, can last uh, between uh, 12 and 14 weeks, uh, depending on the nature of what we have going on. Uh, and that's a rigorous uh, program, our, fi our firefighter program. And afterwards, if they are not EMS or EMT certified, we put them through a EMT course also, which is okay. another four months of education and training. Wow. So when these individuals come to us, they're, they're little babies. Yeah. And then they grow and they become educated and they're ready to go. We, we bombard them with a lot of education, a lot of experience, or a lot of knowledge so we can help gain that experience. Wow, speaking of uh, new firefighters and firefighters in the training, how's the rec recruiting and retention coming along? Well, just like with every other fire department in the nation, yeah. um, re recruitment is an ongoing uh, tedious task. Yes. because we're not the only ones looking for firefighters and EMTs. There's other departments throughout the, the country that are doing the same thing. So we try to recruit and retain as many as we can, and we do that on a daily basis. Uh, once, we get the, once we get them in from the recruitment side, the retention is, is the key, and that's something that we do on a daily basis. Wow. I'm telling you, I have such high respect and high regard for every single thing that our firefighters and our uh, EMTs do to serve the citizens of Douglas County. Yes, ma'am. Uh, your response is above all, and you all go above and beyond the call of duty every single day to respond to the citizens here in Douglas County. And we, and I'm a citizen as well, yes, we do not take that lightly. Tell me a little bit as we close out, certainly uh, thank you for chatting with me today. It's thank been you for having so me. amazing. But I would love to just leave in the citizen's ear about your experience in the military. You retired from the Air Force. You worked uh, Lockheed uh, prior to coming to Douglas County. Yes, ma'am. And you've seen more than um, meets the eye. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you just celebrated a birthday. Your birthday was March. March 20th. Which was? Monday. Monday. Yes, ma'am. And mine was March 10th. Happy birthday. And you were birthday. born in 1969. Yes, ma'am. I was born in 58. I received my Medicare card. It's, I call it my gold <laughs> card. I'm excited about that. And I want you to just, just share and impart your experience with the citizens of Douglas County because I want them to know, and when I say them, our citizens, that you're in good hands. So much is going on in Douglas County uh, in more than uh, meets the eye. Yes, ma'am. Because we have so many good things in the oven, in the pike, and this is just a snippet of what our fire department is doing and our firefighters and I'm so honored for everything that our command staff are doing to move the county forward. So thank you so very much, we appreciate uh, Deputy you. Chief Allen. So just if you could just close out with just tell us about your experience. Yes, ma'am. And uh, your career path. 
So for those that don't know, um, I, have, I am a 21-year veteran of the United States Air Force. I've done 11 years active, 10 years in the reserves. Uh, I was part of Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Um, I, I started out uh, worldwide deployable. Um, I dealt with everything from the 92 Rodney King riots and the fires in LA to earthquakes in Guam. Uh, I spent time over in Saudi Arabia and, and other, other four uh, locations. I ended my retirement in Warner Robins. And then from there, I came here. I, I was a firefighter at Dobbins Air Reserve Base. And then from there, I moved over to Lockheed Martin where we built aircraft. Uh, and I've been blessed to be a part of the Douglas County family. Um, as far as the fire department, uh, I live and breathe for the the citizens. I would live and breathe for the men and women of the Douglas County Fire Department because they are the ones that do the heavy toting and lifting. I'm just here to conduct, for lack of a better way of saying. But rest assured, uh, we are highly educated, we are highly trained, we have the abilities, we have the skills, and we have the knowledge. And every day is a learning day for all of us. So uh, your, your Douglas County Fire Department, the men and women are ready to serve the citizens. And you all are continuing to manage the unexpected yes, because anything at any moment can happen and you all are just have been amazing with your response time and then also your uh, commitment and dedication to the citizens here in Douglas County. Yes, ma'am. Deputy Chief Allen, it has uh, De Dr. Deputy Chief Allen. Thank you. I am just delighted to have you on uh, the, be the first on my chat uh, with the chair program Yay. and segment. And um, I thank you for all the things that you're doing to complement and move our county forward. And we are most appreciative of what you do. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining. Thank, you for, the thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, ma'am.